Welcome to Things You Should Know, The Great War. Today we're moving back over to the Gallipoli campaign and talk about the Third Battle of Krithia, located in Krithia, Gallipoli, between British General Aylmer Hunter Weston and his combined 30,000 men from the British and French armies, and German Commander Lehman von Sanders, leading 23,000 defending Ottoman Turks on the 4th of June, 1915. By now, Sir Ian Hamilton, the overall commander of the British and French forces, had grown tired of General Aylmer Hunter Weston's plans. He did not remove the British commander, but he did moderate what he would allow. Hunter Weston was limited to only planning to advance 800 yards the most at a time. The primary goal was to capture the Turkish trenches and then push an additional 450 yards up to a new set of trenches. The second part of the plan Hamilton pushed through as a two-part artillery bombardment. The first part would end at 11.20 a.m., with the British troops would act like they would begin to push forward, hoping to draw the Turkish troops out of their hiding locations and back into the open. At which case, the Turks would be caught in the second part of the bombardment at 11.30, hopefully to crush as many Turkish soldiers as possible. Battle did start as planned, and the actual British advance started at noon. It is believed almost 6,000 of the Turkish casualties happened during this bait-and-switch moment by the British. That being said, the attack itself wasn't something the British could rest on their laurels about. The Indian Brigade, who was moving along the left flank, was stopped flat-footed by Turkish machine gun fire. The only Indian unit able to make any advancement was the 1-6th Battalion of the Gurkha Rifles. Meanwhile, the 14th Battalion of King George's own Ferozapur Sikh Regiment were wiped out losing 390 men out of 514 and more than 80 percent of their officers. The other successful advance, but this was only by Gallipoli standards, was the 42nd Division reaching the 1st Ottoman trenches. Utilizing the 127th Manchester Brigade to break through the Ottoman 9th Division's defensive network and taking more than 217 prisoners. Up to center, the Royal Navy Division's 2nd Brigade was also able to capture the trenches, but unfortunately the Collingwood Battalion attempted to continue past the trenches and were caught in the open and butchered so badly that the unit was never reformed. With the destruction of the Collingwood Battalion, the 2nd Naval Brigade could not hold on and had to pull back to their starting places. By mid-afternoon, the only area with a clear Allied presence was the center with the 42nd Division. Hunter Weston decided instead of reinforcing the 42nd, he would reinforce the flanks and try to give support that way. Unfortunately for him, the French decided that they were done with the battle and said they would not be moving any further north. By 4 p.m., Allied forces were ordered to dig in, but the timing was bad as the Ottoman forces had started their counterattack. By the end of the battle, the British forces were pushed back from their initial gains and had only gained about 200 yards total for the day. Losses for both sides were heavy, with the British losing approximately 4,500 men and the French forces losing 2,000 men. While the Turkish troops suffered somewhere between nine to 10,000 men killed, wounded, or missing. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, The Great War. Oh.